Good morning. I uh, hope you're having a good day. It's beautiful out there. At least it's dry. The winds have died down. The surf is still large. There's lots of <clears throat> uh, snow in the mountains. It's a beautiful ski day, though. We'll go up there as well. And then as far as those tornadoes yesterday, certainly one confirmed in Scotts Valley. The National Weather Service went out there and they do a ground survey and look at the damage. And maybe you saw the video. Maybe you didn't see the video. But I would say I think the Sunnyvale tornado many years ago, I think it was Sunnyvale, like maybe 20 years ago now. Um, I think that video wasn't even this. This is good California video that I that we found. Um, I hope I can get it up here to show to you, um, but you can Google it too. But uh, so we did have those that the F1 EF1 tornado yesterday around three o'clock Scotts Valley. Uh, there was some reports of, of wind damage out in the Golden Gate Park, kind of when they had that tornado warning yesterday morning in San Francisco County. Uh, I, not, I haven't had any of that confirmed yet, but you can also get with these bigger cells something called a microburst, which looks like a tornado. It doesn't look like tornado damage, but it's windy. So what happens is all the air is going up, up, up into these supercells or these very strong, you know, um, convective cells. It gets way up high in the atmosphere and gets really cold, right? So that's the, the feedback loop. The warm air goes in, it cools, it goes up, and then it comes out. And you get outflow and the cell dies. Well, when you get enough of a strong of an updraft and a, and a consistent updraft, the cold air just... Kind of, uh, and then it falls like a rock coming out of the, and it's called it's called a microburst. It straight down, and then you get these straight line winds that kind of blast out from the edges. So the, that's it's a very different uh, damage footprint than a tornado. So the F1, EF1, and Scotts Valley, they got that. They they picked up rotation. Um, the, the the radar I think uh, confirmed it, and but also the ground damage stuff. Okay, so this is this morning. This is awesome. This is from Mount Tam. Let's see if I can pull up the loop on this thing. And just watching the fog, the valley fog kind of swoops in, then it comes back. It's like, it's like a tide. Yeah, awesome. Oh, my gosh. Just from Mount Tam, looking back towards San Francisco. Stunning. Stunning. One of the best, right? I'm going to roll it again, man. I'll roll it at the end of the, this weathercast so we don't have to sit through too much of this. Um, so it's going to be a dry day today. The fog's taking a while to clear out there. We can take a peek. Let's see. I've got the Caltrans cameras. Let's go to the... Um, Let's go to the fog camera here and just see where the fog is. So I'll come in a little closer and you can see right here, there's the fog. And then the, the, central, the south, southern valley, not getting a lot of valley fog, but you can see the fog here and you can see the flow, kind of a high pressure flow. And that's where that fog started getting pushed offshore. By the way, um, a lot of this fog, when you get valley fog like this, um, that comes out through the gate, like I just showed you, that's when you have the, the worst in most dangerous um, maritime accidents. There, I think there's a, a steamer called the Rio de Janeiro uh, coming into Golden Gate Bridge circa 19 or 1890 or somewhere in that period, just went into the Cliff House rocks, boom, gone. Big, huge disaster. Um, Costco Busan, uh, that was a valley fog day like this. I don't know if you remember that, but it hit the Bay Bridge, uh, hit the pillar, and this is years ago as well. Okay, here we are, <laughs> a little bit of, a little bit of fog history. Now we're looking at the snow. A lot of snow, man. Up two to three feet of snow. Maybe storm totals. Maybe potentially up to uh, four feet of snow uh, in in the in the mountains. And they're getting a break. And then there's more coming as we go into tomorrow. And this is a cool job. This snowplow, guys. It's awesome. Traffic's moving pretty good. Okay, so that's eight eighty uh, King Vale. Let's go, let's come up in here and we'll go. I put, I queued up a bunch of these cameras only because I, I know you like looking at them. Who doesn't? Uh, this is Donner Lake, Nevada 80 westbound. So coming up from Donner Lake, right? Coming out of Truckee. Okay, there's that. That looks pretty slow, like almost like they're slowing traffic down at the top. Um, this will be Kingvale, eastbound 80. I think we looked at this one, didn't we? Okay, well, we don't want to look at that one. Let me have, let's see, go here. Okay, that one's nothing. Let's go alert California. We go to the top of Siberia. This is at uh, Palisades Tahoe. Um, it's not necessarily, it's a live, it's a picture taken uh, about 13 minutes ago. But uh, you get the idea. A lot of snow, beautiful, beautiful day up in the mountains. It's probably in terms of skiing. I, I was at a Christmas party last night. I hung in too. I lasted till like 10, yeah, 10.30. I lasted till, yeah, that's two in a row, man. Um, I'm a hero. My daughter goes, you're a hero, dad, because I'm not a big party guy. Um, this is uh, Lake Tahoe. This is Homewood, which is one of my favorite ski resorts, just for this view. If you've ever skied Homewood, it's the knob. I think it's, they still call it the knob. 
but that view is because you're right on the lake. If you ever go through Homewood and you look to the right, you see the ski resort parking lot right on the road. Um, and so you're just like hovering above the lake, even more than Heavenly Valley. Um, but uh, good day in the mountain skiing. Snow starts up again tomorrow, probably a winter weather advisory. This is Ocean Beach. This is what I said not to do, guys, crab fishing. Um, and you, the thing with crab fishing is you want a high tide, which it is right now. Crabbing today is hard because you, you're throwing a line out to here, and then he just tossed it in. It's big weights. It sits down, and you want to kind of, kind of float around in a little area where the crabs can gather, right? And it, when, the, when the currents are this much, the crabs are getting pushed around at the beach. So besides, I don't think it's a very effective um, way to, it's a fun way to get crabs when there's no surf and the tide's high. But when the tide's high and there's big surf, it's dangerous AF. It just is. It just is. I'm sure that guy knows what he's doing. I'm not beefing him. I'm just saying tide's really high, king tides, right? And uh, big water movement. You go out and the other thing I'll say too is you go deep enough and you're kind of, you want to get, I've done it a few times. You want to get out there as far as you can. So you'll wade in. I'll wade in, you know, and if it's big and you're just trying to get that line a little further out into that little slot where you think the, the, the bait box will sit, um, you're, you're risking your life, actually. Because if you get swept off your feet, if I got swept off my feet in there, even with a wetsuit on, I would, I would struggle. I'd get in, but I'd struggle. Okay, high tide at uh, Steamer Lane. This is not a, a good time to surf, really. You might see a few guys on really long boards. But the thing about high tide in these, these large tides, ooh, awesome, is it, at these places, especially Santa Cruz, it's hard to get in and out of the water. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Um, and this is where most people... I shouldn't say this most, but like this is Pleasure Point. And this is kind of a beefed up tide. Swell's there. It's kind of, you know, you, it's just dumpy right now. As the tide goes out, it'll get better. But my point is there's stairs and rocks that you kind of climb to go up and down. But well, when the tide's in like this, you cut the exit point at Pleasure Point is kind of right up this slot. Getting in there is treacherous. So a lot of times folks will go out and they'll be walking in and a set like that will come through. And they're walk, trying to find the stairs and they're up against the cliff. So I have known... I've known two or three guys that have had real problems. I know a guy that died, actually, when I worked, worked at uh, CBS in San Francisco. At Pleasure Point, he was, or Steamers Lane, he was coming out at night. And, you know, it's, it's no matter how, I mean, no matter how good a surfer you are, no matter how, you slip and you fall and a set comes and you get squished into the cliff, you hit your head, you're done. Okay, not to be a bummer, but uh, that's, I worry about that. So what do we got right now? We've got the next system coming in here. I think you can see, let me move it this way just a little bit. You can see that. Isn't that awesome? I'm going to move this way further. But see that, the, the signature of that? That's Monday's system. And you see the convective, act, the convective components to that. that the, I'll stop it up. No, I won't stop it up. But you can see the shadows. That means there's vertical development in that line. So thunderstorm certainly a possibility, but just really pretty potent weather system. We'll see what that looks like on the computer model. This is GFS. I know I should show you more models, but... I usually look at a bunch and then I go back to the GFS just because it somehow it always seems to want to be right in the middle. Um, and it actually did a nice job in the last storm. GFS is, I think, global forecast system. So um, here is today. This is this afternoon. You see where we are. I put a loop around us. And then you see here comes this is Monday morning. And you see most of the dynamics are further north. This is Monday mid morning. And then this is Monday mid morning. And then this kind of see it fall apart. So that's kind of, you know, what do you do with that? In the mountains, they'll get a few inches of snow. In North Bay, maybe gets a tenth of an inch, quarter of an inch. And then up north, those dynamics that we pointed out earlier go this way. And then if you're thinking about the long range for the, four, the, the Christmas vacation time, this is all the way to December 19th. So it's clear, right? It, nice weather. Maybe valley fog this week as we get past Monday. Um, and then this system here comes in on the 22nd of December. That looks like potential. And then another clipper and then another clipper. That one looks a little bigger, and that is right at Christmas. So right now, we look like we have a pretty slow week, except for tomorrow, and it goes through pretty quick. And then it looks like somewhere around Christmas, we get back into, back into it. Let's look at this again. I hope you're having a good day. I'm not going to make this go on too long. But So the, the story is uh, mountain skiing is awesome right now. Don't go surfing. Don't go crabbing. Hey, listen, if you've got a boat and you're thinking about going in the ocean, Leave it on the trailer. Don't go in the ocean because the swells come back up as we go into, um, as we go into, let's see, today's Sunday, Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday, the swell pops back up. So it's still big. 
it's still a, a large, large swell, but it the swell pops back up, and you just don't want any part of this, and it gets going to stay big for the, about the rest of the week. Mountain travel will be a little sketchy tomorrow night. Today's money, but I'm telling you, if, you, if you're one of those dudes who, or anybody who has time and can get up there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and avoid the valley fog skiing is going to be awesome. Okay, so that's a bunch. Um, hope you had a good, have a good day. I'll see you tonight. I'll be on channel two. Uh, at uh, I think we got NFL football, so I'll be on at six o'clock. Okay, see you there.